So testicular cancer we know is a highly curable cancer, but it's important to understand that having a disease-free condition is not the same as living with psychosocial and physical effects from treatment. And we know that late effects from treatment can reduce um, life expectancy. So much of our research in testis cancer now is focused on trying to help our patients live longer and live better. And perhaps the best way to do that is to minimise the overall treatment burden while maximising the still excellent outcomes. So today in the testicular cancer session, we heard from three abstracts, one from Dr. Bagrodia, who spoke about uh, identifying platinum markers of platinum resistance. And this is really important because we are able to identify patients who are resistant to cisplatin. Maybe we can intensify treatment in their, in their first line, which might reduce their need for salvage chemotherapy in the future and also increase the chance of cure. Dr. Nappi presented a very interesting abstract looking at microRNA 371 as a marker of minimal residual disease for stage one testis cancer. And she showed that a post orchidectomy specimen was able to detect 50% of future recurrences using a plasma-based microRNA 371 assay. There's still some work to be done though. We need to confirm these data prospectively. And there are three major prospective studies that are looking at this. One is the ANZAP led climate study. One is the SWOG led S1823. And one is the COG led AGCT 1531. And we're hoping that these studies will read out in the coming years and we'll have prospective data to confirm that microRNA 371 is gonna be a great predictive biomarker for recurrence in stage one testis cancer. And the final abstract was presented by Dr. Tanstar who looked at primary RPLND for stage two seminoma. And this is great because this allows us to cure men with stage two seminoma without the need for chemotherapy, without the need for radiation and without all their long-term side effects. And he presented some interesting data where FDG PET was used and, and the utilization of FDG PET prior to surgery was able to limit the number of surgeries that would un be undertaken for benign disease. So that's very helpful for our patients. And he also reported that patients with high risk features following surgery would then go on to have one cycle of BEP chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting. And that was able to reduce the number of recurrences substantially. There's a bit of work to be done about how do we optimize patient selection uh, for primary RPLND, but this is the, the future of a stage two seminoma. And I guess the final thing which wasn't presented today, but was presented yesterday in, a, in the development of therapeutics immunotherapy session, is this cutting edge approach to treating refractory testes cancer. And that's using a Claudin-6 targeted CAR T cell therapy. BioNTech um, is a pharmaceutical company that developed a BNT211, which is a CAR T cell therapy targeting Claudin-6. And Claudin-6 is highly expressed in testis cancer, and they've sh shown some remarkable responses in very refractory, very heavily pretreated testis cancer patients. So that's the future of a testis cancer. Hopefully we can help our, our men live uh, longer and live better.